Welcome to TEDx Chardonnay. I was really deep down inside the business. So I had business, I was always interested in, in to be inside in the business industry and always worked inside the business industry. And uh, I got my expertise in the marketing department and I was like, you know what, let's, let's continue this as a career. And uh, this year, something really interesting happened. I switched to the humanitarian sector. It wasn't on purpose. I didn't knew. I thought that Asil is a business and, and, and I'm going to be working on the buy good side and it's going to be amazing. I will be like more finding a product market fit for the Afghani products in the foreign countries. And I came to the office and this guy, Nasrat Khaled, the CEO of the company, I'm sitting with him. And uh, he tells me one sentence. He told me, the humanitarian system is broken. You know, what was my first initial thought that I thought with myself? From where does he get his weed, his hash? Because the hash that he's using is really strong. Why is that? It, like, how you can think of something like that? The humanitarian system is broken, and it's a bit, I mean, like, it's a, almost a trillion dollar industry, right? I told him how, and he told me back that when you went on a mission, you're going to understand. I was like, okay, let's see what, the, what does the mission look like. Usually I'm the guy who is inside the office developing his strategies, making, uh, the, the, making sure the business is uh, right inside the market and all of those stuff. So suddenly the floods in the Baglan happens. And I'm coming to the office and they're like, Forrest, we need you on the side. I'm like, amazing, let's go. Let's see what does this mission look like, right? So over there, I found the humanitarian system was broken. Why? I will make a two space over here, just like my boss. Okay? So one space is the normal people, and the other space is the humanitarian organizations. Disclaimer alert, I'm not talking about all humanitarian organizations, I'm talking about most of them. Okay. So think of this, the humanitarian organization comes up over here, and they're going to be like, okay guys, what do you need? Uh, we need shelter. Okay, send him some food package. Once again, next village. Okay, guys, what do you need? Uh, our water supply system is not good over here. You know what? Send him food packages. Once again. Wait a second, wait a second, it's not over yet. Once again, guys, what do you need? We need clothes. We need food packages. Once again. So, last time, last time. I promise this is going to be the last time. So, guys, what do you need? We need food packages. You know what? Let's build a school for them. So, this is how the system is not working. Because when you're going to be in the middle of a disaster, the priorities change. I went to the side. There was this guy over there. I'm, 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 I'm talking with him, and he's looking at me. He's like, please, don't give me food packages. I've got like four of them. Now I don't have any place to keep the food packages. So this much money comes into the circle of the economy, and what happens? It's like, whoosh, done, without anything. So now this is the problem, right? I'm, I'm inside the problem space over here. So, so now let's talk about what is causing this problem. The system is wrong. Why? Because whenever you are sending a person for a survey, that surveyor is actually the guy to blame. So what happens, so I saw over there. So the guy goes for the survey. 
The first thing, he comes up on the side with his armored vehicle and cool sunglasses. He's walking down the holding and everyone is chasing them like, engineer, engineer, you know? And then what happens? He goes, who's the wealthiest guy over here? He's going to be like, for example, you. And then what happens? He will be like, come with me. Give me the list of the names that they, you think that they are poor people. Then what happens? The rich guy is like, finally. Well, 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 it's my time to shine, you know? <laughs> so what they're going to do, they're going to be like, OK, I've got this cousin, this cousin, this is my brother, this is the other cousin. Uh, that, that cousin from the other village, he will also join, you know? So what happens over here, all of the humanitarian aid goes to a specific family, rather than solving a problem. So now, this is one part. Now let's see the other page. Why does, does this system did develop? This system works really fine for the Western uh, cultures. But with our culture, you know it. There's no need talking about that part. You know, everyone knows about that thing. You know, like, like I, do, I did remember sometimes going into some offices and they were like, the first question, where are you from? And I'm like, where do I look like from? <laughs> so this is something which is happening and deep down inside our culture. And this is problematic. So what's the solution? Now let's get out of the problem space. Now let's get into the solution space. The solution in space is simply hearing. So you might not be uh, familiar with the ASEALS ecosystem. We have got a group of volunteers which are working, and they are named ATALAN. So what does the ATAL do, the specific job of ATAL? So what's the difference between the ATAL and the guy who surveys? This is what I want to go through. So the ATALs, instead of coming in a bunch. So what they're going to do, they're going to go home by home. They're going to check out the house. Fun story over here, guys. I might be taking your time, but this is really funny. So uh, I'm in Baghlan. So uh, we were trying to take some lists over here. So I'm, I'm taking some footage with my team, and everyone is like, like doing their job properly. And I'm seeing one guy standing over there. He looks like really, 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 really miserable. Like you want to just instantly give some cash to that guy and you're going to be like, you know what, just go. I don't want to look at your face. What happens? One of our adults came in and just took this guy out of the line. I was like, finally. Same thing is happening inside a seal. But I told the guy, I asked him, like, What's the issue? I mean, he's the most miserable guy you can, you can find over here. The other came to me, and he was like, you know what? The restaurant that last night you ate food is his. And his daily income is around 6,000 Afghanis. And that guy was standing in the line. Typical our culture. <laughs> exactly. Whenever it's free, it's for everyone. It's not for, for, for the poor people. You know, like, th this is the mentality that we are developing. Whenever it's free, it's, it's for everyone. It's, it, it, we don't mind it, whether we, whether we are poor, rich, or whatever. So anyway, back to the atoll part. So how did that atoll found that this guy is not poor? Because he was living over there. Because he had a network over there. And I asked him, OK, I agree with you. This guy have got a restaurant. But do you have anything to prove? So we have got a proof of delivery system inside a seal. So whenever you are donating to someone, you're going to have a receipt of it, whether in video or pictures. So I was like, do you have any kind of stuff to prove this thing? He was like, let's go for, a lunch, uh, let's go for lunch into, into his restaurant. And I was like over there, and I was like, ah, nice. Uh, just a quick question. Were you like, like cooking that stuff over here or inside your home? So this is the initial part of a seal. Now, the author got the ID. He knows that who is who, and they have got a proof of it. They know that this guy is going to be like the mis most miserable guy. 
And then what happens over here? Now here's the magic uh, happening. Our distribution sites, we are not going over there and you're gonna be like, you know what, it's a food package. No, 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 we are not that kind of people. So what do we do? We go, we ask them, what do you need? I went to a village and I asked this, this same question. I was like, what do you need? And they were like, we need water supply. We don't have water drink for, for, for drinking. I went over there, you're not gonna believe this. You're not gonna believe this. I went with my own car over there and they were banging on my doors of my car and they were begging for a bottle of water because they didn't have water for seven days. Just imagine that thing. And what happens, the other guy comes in, you know what, send them a food package. How does that help? So I talked with the team, I was like, okay, what's the budget for, for, for this area? How, much, how, many, how many OMID IDs have been generated in this area? And how much uh, do we have from the campaign side? They were like, we have enough camp for, for, for supplying water. I was like, let's do it. And we did that. And the most amazing part was this, that 400 families inside that village got drinkable water. <laughs> this was it. I almost remember every part of it. There, there was like two small kids. They were holding the pipe, you know, they were helping us. And do you know what does the one small kid says to the other one? Don't you wanna have drinkable water? Move, faster. I was like, you know, if the system is proper, if the system is all right, we're gonna have a best result. But if the system is corrupted from the, from the basic level, it will be just corrupted to hold the thing. And at that time, I knew that my boss doesn't smoke weed. Yeah, that was the time that I got to knew. Last but not least, I, I, I would like to add one more part to this and then it's gonna be done. I, I don't wanna take too much of your time. What does the red zone look like and what does the yellow zone look like? So the red zone is whenever people, they're almost at the point of losing. Losing their lives, losing their families, losing their houses. So this is called a red zone area. Then we have got the yellow zone area. The yellow zone, what does it mean? It means that they can work by themselves. They can solve something with by themselves. Right now, Afghanistan is, is, is unfortunately in the red zone area. I've been to Ghor, I've been to Faryab, I've been to Badakhshan, I've been to like almost like 30 provinces. And inside each province, I found that Afghanistan is unfortunately inside the red zone. People, they cannot help each other. They cannot do stuff by themselves. So how we can get them through red zone to the yellow zone? It's not like simple as this. It takes a lot of effort, you know? So you must be thinking like, okay, I donated something today. So what happened? The chain just continues and, and there's gonna be more donations and everything. No, we need to help the people to a certain level that they're gonna get a balance, a balance in their life. I went to one of the houses and uh, over there, there was this old lady around 85 who's living with his husband and he has no, and she has nobody, absolutely no one, no son. I was like, where is your son? He was like, ah, downstairs, he's living with his wife. I was like, he's living a good life. His father is upstairs with his mom, living in the worst situation, and then you have got your son who's going down, unfortunately. But I, don't, I thought of it, that what can I do for these people? I just went to sit next to this old lady and I was like, uh, mother, what can I do for you? She was like, I've got some land down there. I don't have anyone else to work for me. So can you get someone from the city so that he can work on my lands? I was like, how much that would cost? I was like, around like 20 grand? I was like, do it. That's what we are looking after. Helping each other. Food might be one of the basic elements of life, but there's also water, you know? There's also education, there's also 
uh, like, like tons of other stuff. We need mental uh, help centers inside all of these provinces. If I'm gonna talk about the problems of inside the each province that I went, I might take around like maybe till four o'clock tomorrow, not today. So, because the problems are over there. So what you guys can do is simply three steps. In this journey that we are going together, you can do three steps. You can create a campaign on a C lab. You can share a campaign on a C lab. You don't like both of it? Just put a like over there. At least we're going to get the credit, you know? So this is what you can do. One of the ways to solve a problem is to create awareness. And I guess that's all. Yeah.